no worries Cause you know we got the sweet hot deals It's summertime uh, uh. Let me tell you where it's going down Motor World in Cold Bay, come on down And let me tell you when it's going on August 31st, better write it down So many cars for you to see Changan Hyundai GAC Bring a friend, bring your family First monthly payment free Hot deals oh, oh. The Motor World Hot Summer Car Show is going down Saturday, August 31st with on-the-spot financing from RBC Bank and Windward Islands Bank. Receive up to $4,000 off, your first monthly payment free, and a free gift like a 50-inch Samsung TV with your purchase. Plus, 100% financing is available. No down payment required. Check out Motor World's website and social media pages for more information. Welcome to Late Night Show. Hope everything is okay. Hope everything is all right. I'm your host, I'm Okie Okie dokie, kids, what's happening on the lovely island of St. Martin? We begin with the slop of the century, the Chris Rock of St. Martin. Slap me today and file a report tomorrow. Uh, I, try and, I, got, I have like a whole list. I, I just I completely forget. Um, oh! Slap me, baby. <laughs> Only the World Wars fans would understand that one. Anyway, okay, so this is the situation. So there's two politicians. One gets slapped. One gave the slap. Whoa, I know. So, <laughs> this is, and the story is the, the story's ridiculous. Because when I hear the story, I was trying to compare notes because one gave his side, the other one gave the other side. And I was like, what is the truth? Where's the video? And up to now, the mysterious video can't be shared as yet. That's why I waited a day before I actually brought it to you guys because I was like, nah, I need to see a video. So, Aaron Maida of um, the United People's Party. This time he's not running. He is supporting um, the leader of the party, Omar Atli, member of parliament. On the other side, the UNICEF, number four candidate, Herbert Martina, a.k.a. Prince. Um, the number four candidate, he decided to slap the taste out of the mouth of Armand Meda. Story started yesterday when Armand Meda went to um, the radio show of his fearless leader, um, Omar Atli, on SOS Radio. He gave his side of the story, so I'm going to start off with his side of the story. I'll give you the opportunity to explain. I know it stemmed um, from a post, mm -hmm. but uh, give you the opportunity to discuss with the viewers clearly on what happened, because I would say this though, and, and this is your opportunity to clear it up. I did see a, a quick um, excuse of uh, you spitting on the person. And if this is so, um, I will tell you I don't condone it. So. And I'll give you the opportunity to explain what happened to our listeners and our viewers so they get a better picture of what, what we're talking about. All right. So um, last evening, uh, uh, Mr. Prince Martina, the number four candidate of the URSM, uh, made a post concerning um, the leader of the United People's Party um, that is uh, uh, true from a concerned citizen that your posters were up, one was down, one was up. So I counted it with, I say, hey, look, it's not only, you know, Omar Ati poster was up, by the way, on a private business, but there was other posters elsewhere all around the island that they did not point out. So it was, to me, in my opinion, it was a clear indication that they was targeting the United People's Party leader and not a general, um, you know, concern on 
posters that was left up during the storm. Um, with that said, this morning I was uh, uh, well overnight. I was I stayed at um, a hotel in Kupukoi, and as I descended from the stairs um, this morning around uh, six thirty this morning, um, I saw Prince coming out from the elevator on on the opposite side. I was not going to mention anything, but you know, out of a little respect, I said good morning. You know, he didn't say anything, and as we turned. We exit the the corridor. We're going into the now the lobby. He, I'm in front. He's behind me, stating, "You had a lot to say. You had a lot to say." So as I stopped by in front of the front desk, which has, by the way, um, the front desk clerk, she is there. So there is eyewitness of everything. Um, as I stopped there, he came in front of me. And then he started to enter my personal space, saying the same thing over and over. And I'm what like, was the same thing over and over? Um, you had a lot to say. And I'm like, you know, and I noticed he come up really close to me. I said, yes, I do have a lot to say. And I mentioned, I said, there's cameras. And he said, he don't care. And suddenly there was, you know, a strike to my face, on my right side of my face. There's a, at that moment, there was a lot going through my mind. But one thing that kept me from doing anything is because I care for the candidate that I am backing. And I do not want to embarrass him, nor the political party that I support. We're five days or four days away from elections. Elections is right there next Monday. And what he did, he's going to be responsible and he will be held accountable through the law. As he should. Um, there, uh, there is an eyewitness to what happened, and there is cameras. So he can go out and say whatever he wants. So no, so you're telling me nowhere in your story I'm hearing spit. There is, no, there is no spit. And matter of fact, if I spat on him, I think you would wipe your face. The camera is going to show that there is no wiping of his face. He was up in my face. He backed up a little bit, and he slapped me, and he walked off. Oh, wow. The most insulting thing I said to him as he walked off, because I said I told the, 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 the clerk to call the police. As he walked up, I said, where are you going? Stay here for the police. And he got he said, call the police. I said, you're a coward. That was the most insulting thing I said to him at that moment, after I was struck. Um, mind you, up to when I went to the police station, which was, you know, this happened 630 I called the police at 6.38, um, 6.35, 6.38, around that time. And um, by, I, I was by the police station around 11.40 to go in 12 o'clock, around that time, to do the report. I have the full report of what happened. And while I was at the station, given my report, while, while the report was finalizing, the, the lady was um, had me sign it, everything, I got a message saying that, um, asking me if I spent on on Martina. And I told the officer who took my report, I told her that, I said, by the way, he's saying that, I just got a message that saying that um, he spat on me, that I spat on him. So I told her, I said, that is not true. I said, man, in fact, there's eyewitness. If you want to talk to them, you can contact them. I can give you the number. And there is camera footage that will be out shortly. That mm -hmm. will, you know, um, you already done do something that is not good and to protect yourself you're trying to lie knowing full whether there's a camera that caught everything on camera you will be proven not just a, a violent person but you will be proven as a liar so you mean to tell me that mr martina post i saw his post by the way as a, for a concerned citizen of my posters and uh, you responded showing that the amount my poster actually was actually one poster on a private company um a private business but however nonetheless all of the posters i removed and there was someone on the floor on the floor yeah on course. the floor because of course in a storm you never you know you don't know what to expect so i understand and everything was rectified and and, and accountability was assumed that's mm. how it goes and then you responded and said, but look at all these other posters that are up. Because I saw a whole lot of other posters that are up 
and you know, nonetheless, right is right, wrong is wrong. Yeah. But it, right. you can tell I was being singled out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just by saying that, because I read your post today, and it was no disrespect in your post. There's no disrespect, and, know, and, so, and so, not even his name was mentioned. So you, so you were slapped with an open hand or a close? Open, hand? open hand. <clears throat> okay, and this is Mr. Martina from Mr. the U.S. Prince. Said, Martina from the U.S. My, my, my favorite part of the interview was when the leader said, did he slap you with a closed fist or an open fist? <laughs> you should have asked him if it was front or backhand. Mm? Uh, either way, somebody's the bitch. All right, that's one part. The second part is then, of course, Herbert Martina, the number four candidate of the USM, decided to go and defend himself. Who told him to do that? I have no idea because I would have just washed my mouth because I'm the assaulter. But you know what? At the end of the day, everybody has a voice. Everybody's a politician and everybody has a side. So this wonderful politician decided to go on radio and he explain his side of the story. Let's compare notes, guys. Stay with me. Let's go to Mr. Prince Herbert Martina. This individual, mm -hmm. even up to now, has been harassing um, my person, other people in the community, um, has been berating women, has been um, even have personal attacks. So that's where I come from when we talk about personal attacks. Yes. If you see even up to today, um, yesterday I posted a flyer that I will be on Oasis mm -hmm. and he still tend to go onto my Facebook page and put, I'm a woman beater, I am a, um, a cheater, and I'm a downright criminal, mm -hmm. okay? Those are serious accusations. So I'm asking him now, um, you have any proof that I am a woman beater? Do you have, as a matter of fact, I sat in a living room with this individual, whereas he verbally and nearly physically attacked a female because she voiced her opinion and she was in her grandfather's house. So this individual now wants to come and slander my good name. And if anybody knows me, right? Uh -huh. Yes, I was out of character. I'll tell St. Martin, the public right now, yes, Herbert Martina did slap Armand Maida. Okay. Okay. You know, so I, I just want to, to have it clear, you know, when we talk about good governance, we talk about transparency, yes. we talk about, you know, coming out for the greater good of the community. And, you know, I gave gave you the opportunity to talk directly to the community of St. Yes. Martin. Because, you know, I'm not about the hearsay. I understand. You know, that. we're in a p political election. This is serious business. And I think that the people are owed the truth. That's it. Mm -hmm. um, Electra? And I'm, I'm very, um, how you say, happy that you are able to share your candidness yes. with us here on the air. Yes. Yes. Um, and I would tell you the the the, uh, the events that led up to this. Yes. Okay. So um, a couple of days ago, the prime minister issued a a, a caution. Uh, the, he urged everybody, implore everybody, to take the posters down. Yes. Okay. Um, after the storm or during the storm, someone sent me some pictures. Okay. I call it concerned citizen. Mm -hmm. And I put up uh, two pictures on Facebook. This gentleman decide to, um, you know, attack and, and start slandering. And yes, we are, um, how do you say, uh, we are, uh, are, are nervous because we're going to lose the two seats that we have and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And continue to basically, you know, kind of uh, jeer the public on. Okay? Okay. Good. Then um, I met a friend and I was at um, the hotel. The police called me and said, listen, there's a gentleman in here and he is filing a complaint that you assaulted him. Okay. Um, what happened? You know, he, say, he said that he was down there flyering. Electra, if you're going to be truthful with the people, tell them. There's nowhere you're going to be flyering at 6.30 in the morning down Cooper Coy. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Good. I came out from uh, seeing a friend and when I came out of the elevator, um, this guy, he looked at me and he was so shocked to see me. He did like this right. and he walked off. I went and I said, I said, oh, you have a lot of things to say on Facebook, a lot of smack. The gentleman turns around 
and kind of like you know square off yes i have a lot to say you know squared off at me so i went and i said oh you have a lot to say and then he turns and said um he looks he said yes and just for you to know that the camera is right there uh watching you as soon as he said so spit came on my cheek okay right and immediately i just i smacked him you 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 reacted. i reacted and i smacked him to be quite honest that is a normal reaction right for um especially when someone is taunting you when someone is is kind of cyber bullying you okay we talk about cyber bullying right mm -hmm. i don't believe because i'm a public figure i don't believe because i am on a list that someone has access open access that they can um try to belittle me they can try to um uh, irritate me or taunt me okay it's still in samathi we live in all right mm -hmm. and then some people might say but um does it warrant a slap right correct the guy came up in my face and i'm not going to say but his he his personal hygiene was not up to par and then mm -hmm. when spit came on my face right i smacked him so an official um police report has been filed and i have a question that i want an answer to so if mr armin mira can answer or mr prince herbert martina can answer as soon as possible kindly send me a voice note or send me a message via facebook or on or, or, or messenger something what were you guys doing at a hotel at 6 30 a.m in kipokoi because one say one was giving out flyers the next one they were visiting out a friend they were visiting a friend <laughs> listen i just want to know inquiring minds want to know what are you were doing at the same hotel at 6 30. are you are you are you got coupons to the same hotel kipoka is the only hotel that have elevators like i have so much questions and it sounds like such a, a um an american type of domestic violence situation because it's like a elevator so um <laughs> i was just um going um in the elevator and then i see him and then i said hello and then he didn't answer me so i went to the lobby and then he said he got he got you got much to say and then all of a sudden we um um he was in my face and i was like yeah i got a lot to say wham slap in the face and he was like oh 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 <laughs> police please let me call police because normally i would have messed him up and i would have deal with him because I, this guy looks like a gangster yeah armin look armin he looks like a real gangster there but then again, you know, after watching Jeffrey Bum, <laughs> you, you, you can't take nobody look for <laughs> Jeffrey had looked like a stone cold, a stone cold nerd, and he was eating people at home. So nah, okay, <laughs> you never know. Serial killers are real. But anyway, I don't get it. What Prince and Armin were doing in the same vicinity? What are you doing? Please, somebody. Let me know. Just saying. Anyway, I waiting for the camera footage, guys. I want to see who, what is what. And then the thing is, right? The words, the wording is the one of the funniest things. And don't laugh, okay? This is serious business. Because domestic violence? No, not this. It's not domestic violence when it's two men. It's. Altercation of two foes. Haha. <laughs> Wording is everything, Andrew. Let's go. All right. So, the, some of the words that were used was very, very explicit. Especially when <laughs> Armin said, um, yeah, so Prince slapped me and he said, you got a lot to say. And then when he said, yeah, but the, the taping, he said, yeah, but 
um, I don't care. And then a slap happened. And he was like, yeah, take that. You can't take all of that. Like all those type of things. Like what's, what's happening? Who's taking what? Who's, who's, who's taking and who's giving? Who's slapping and who's taking the slap? I don't know. Somebody have to be the alpha. That's what I'm saying. That's all. Just, just, you just can't be going around slapping each other. Like, come on now. And the thing is, right, Prince? Let me talk to Prince for a minute because I know him personally. Prince, why are you going to slap the man with an open hand? Why would you do that to him? You know, that, that's, that's like, that's, that's not the meaning, you know. Like, if you had seen a man like a man, you would do it close hand. But you just do it like open hand. Like, he was just like, female dog, look here. <laughs> just gangster like that. Open hand. Listen, a man hit me open hand. I go run for the sky. I go run for the sky and come back with something to redeem myself, you know, because I don't know. I don't know. Like, like if you can hit me, hit me with close or fist. Just the open hand. Open hand means you have no respect for me. <laughs> it got no respect. It was like, pow. Say something now. <laughs> oh, Armin, shouldn't be a politician, my friend. I wouldn't be wasting so much time on this situation, but um, it's not going to affect anything in this, in, the, in, this, in this election. It just shows that, um, one, I don't like how people just starting to hit people for their mouth. It's starting to become a recurring, uh, a recurring trend in St. Martin, and I think it's something that needs to be taken seriously by authorities. Because if I say something about somebody and then they see me in the hotel with me being there at the same time, and then they start to slap me, the first thing you're going to see is, why are they at the hotel together? <laughs> okay, I'm done with it. Let's go up to the next topic. All right. Um, the marketplace in Phillipsburg um, is gone, in case you didn't know. I'm just, I'm just giving you a little bit of, you know, in case you were living under a rock and you wasn't here for Ernesto. But uh, Member of Parliament Omar Atri has decided to come out with a plan for, to create a thousand parking lots in Phillipsburg if elected. So he's going to make a big construction, building three stories, and he's going to provide a thousand um, parking spots. So the USM decided to um, do something similar, but on a smaller scale. So they decided to uh, wait for Ernesto to break, it, break down the, the marketplace in Phillipsburg and create 20 parking spots that people are using there illegally. What is wrong with St. Martin? I swear to God, you know, I use the most savage people, you know. The, the storm pass. You see the market ladies crying and picking up their stuff and cleaning out and having to go on the side to set up so that they can sell their stuff and you just feel so sorry and all you just wait the whole like the day for them to clean the debris there and the next morning all you just gonna park there like nothing like new parking lot pop up we here <laughs> yay thank you USM new parking lot it's only St. Martin is happening now. Like, a big disaster happened to these market places, these, these market, um, 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 market spot places. And I'm just like, how soon you think we could park over there, boy? They ain't gonna charge us, right? Because across the road, they charge. Here, don't charge. So whoever come first, ha ha! So now, we are surrounded by parking spots, if you notice. So they got a marketplace parking spot. Across the road, you got a government administration parking spot. Then you have 
on the pond fill, another parking spot. Then you have the USM, uh, the, the, the USM parking lot, the government building parking lot. Then you have on the ring road, that's another parking lot. Then you have the post office, that's a parking lot. And guess what, GB, the old building, a parking lot. What is this government? A parking lot government. All we can do is make parking lots. Whether we make it man-made, disaster-made, it's going to be a turn of parking lot. So please, don't leave your house because if anything happened to it, it's going to turn into a parking lot. Gangster, just like that. One, two, three. Boom. I said these... Mind you, know, you see the, the vendors on the side, all the way to the back, trying to still make shift a little bit of corner table with this stuff. And then a bunch of cars just blocking all of this. <laughs> I was like, what? How does it? It's a good parking spot. I ain't gonna lie, because you're close by in town. <laughs> and the thing is, the best part, I love St. Martin people for this. <laughs> one minute, just one minute, I'm just going to pick up something there quick. Ho hold on, one. Uh, one minute, I just have to buy something for my kids. <laughs> Wait, no, I got something important. I got some important stuff in my car. I can't park it fast, so I park it here. Yeah, I know it's not a parking lot, but <laughs> it's open. There's access, so I could just park. <sighs> Welcome to the Late Night Show. We have a good one for you. What we're going to do is we'll, we'll be beginning um, <laughs> when we come back. Something else we got to talk about. Let's go! Now you know why they don't like La Cruz Francisco. Because he's giving people job opportunities. I know why they don't like La Cruz Francisco. Because we vote in number four for you, B party. It's time to raise the bar, let's take it to the top. It's time to choose qualified people to rep for ya. From the prison, I still seeing ya, she's right here for ya. Can't forget the education, it's time for better. She's ready and she's focused to get the job done. SXMD time is now, let us all vote for change. Shamira is the candidate to represent for us. She's gonna represent us locally and even to the Dutch. Hey, he's a man for the people. people Do anything that he needs to Standing on business, no time for the gimmicks He's a real deal, no time for pretending Say Martin, you know that he's the one Here to serve the people and to get the job done When everybody else turn their backs and they run Just know that you could always count on Edsel Gump Tell me why Welcome to the National Institute for Professional Advancement Where dreams meet education At NEPA, we offer nine exciting programs to help you reach your full potential. From our state-of-the-art culinary program, where you can master the art of cooking, to our hospitality program, preparing you for the dynamic world of service. Our electrical installation technician program offers hands-on experience and practical skills for a bright future. Our ICT program is designed for the digital age, and our general property maintenance program helps you craft a solid foundation in construction. Plus, gain real-world skills in our automotive technology program with day and evening classes and validated certifications. Join us at NEPA, where your journey to success begins.
Enroll now. Say my day in for this election. We vote in for Jurendi Doran for government to progress. Good day, as you know, on the road with Doran. Although this time is a bit different because we're not on any side roads. We're on the main road of Dutch Water. Um, as you know, over the years, Dutch Water have been plagued with many issues for infrastructure. What you're seeing happening here now is with respect to the sewage network, which had um, some challenges over the last couple of decades. But indeed, as we move forward, we were able to reprioritize some funds in order to allocate enough funds to continue with this project. Great job, Carl. Thank you. Jeremy, come on up. For the final word in the Spelling Bee Championship, please spell insurance. Insurance. N-A-G-I-C-O. Insurance. That's correct. I hope your father can spell Najiko too. Najiko is insurance. Insurance is Najiko. Welcome back to the show. Now, of course, um, let us continue um, with this um, wonderful, wonderful thing we call um, St. Martin. <laughs> now, on Monday, of course, they have the election that is coming up. And, uh, you know, the galore of what we call politicians going to different um, radio stations and saying the same thing over and over, but on a different day is ridiculous. Um, I am tired of these politicians going on radio programs every day on the hour and it's the same set of politicians not even a new set you know it's the old set is the one that bothered me because the same thing you told me last week most probably you'll tell me the same thing this week so why are you still talking like why like why i don't i don't i don't get it I don't get it, but I guess they're trying to reach the maximum amount of um, voters out there. So no problem. I understand. Um, let us um, go into an interview. And that's why I like Richard Gibson for, because he's so practical. He's like, <clears throat> got to do his voice. Um, Andrew, I, 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 I don't understand why I would have to come to your studio and record another interview when I just did one with Oral Gibbs. So um, I send you the clip and then you play that for your audience because I will most probably say the same thing. I was like, yes, Mr. Gibson, you're the man. So this video is courtesy of Oral Gibbs. Of course, uh, make sure you check out his YouTube channel, Oral Gibbs, and of course, his uh, radio station, Hot 99.9. Uh, all right. This interview with um, Mr. Richard Gibson Sr. Morning, Take a look. I'm doing fine. Good morning to the listeners, TV as well as radio. I'm good, glad to be back here. Uh, we have just a couple of days left. Mm. And uh, this critical, critical election, I call it a critical election because our survival depends on it. We cannot, we cannot continue the way we have been going. Changes have to be made. If not, we will not survive. So it's very crucial now that the voters do the right thing. It's crucial and you, you could feel it. I mean, uh, with the GV problem that we all are experiencing, you know, when you ask yourself, why did that happen? Something that was totally unnecessary. Something that is so critical to the economy. And they allowed it to happen against all advices, all um, critical information that they had in their hand. You cannot, you cannot govern a country when you don't pay attention to these extremely important details that everybody survival depends on. Yes, this is a critical election and people 
don't have, even though they want to, they don't have the option to go about business as usual. Vote for family, vote for friends because you like them. Now you really got to be, stand up and be counted. You got to vote for St. Martin and St. Martin's welfare and everybody's welfare going forward. August 19th election is crucial, critical, and you have this opportunity now to make the necessary changes that have to be made. You know, Mr. Gibbs, I noticed other political uh, parties and candidates are now uh, jumping on your idea of GB and government compensation to this. Uh, well, it took a little while, I guess, but they all can reason it out now. I cannot have a dog that I'm responsible for. And the dog gets loose and goes out the yard and bites people, some of them almost to the point that they're almost dying. Somebody is responsible to pay for the damages they cause, do, caused by the dog. And who does that? The owner of the dog under the law is responsible. GB is no difference. GBE, uh, when you get the facts and you put them in a row, you can see that they have been warned. They have received reports. They knew when those engines reached their lifespan. They knew that at any moment after that, we could have a crash and they would not be able to support our economy with the energy demands that our economy has. They knew this in advance. They still say, oh, we can get around to it. Oh, we can get around to it. Well, they stretch the elastic too far, the electric elastic burst. But somebody is going to have to be responsible to pay the bill. And who that is? From the top to the bottom, it starts at the minister who's responsible for the policies that he followed and whether or not he uh, or she uh, followed up and make sure that everything underneath them is working the way it should, should be able to work. Uh, up to and including the board of GB. GB as an entity owes everybody compensation for all, all the damages they have suffered. You know, to show how disastrous this is, and I'm going only by what the Prime Minister said. He said that GBE last audited financial statements of the company goes back to 2019. It tells you how gross negligent everybody involved with GEB from the top to the bottom is. First of all, when I go to the minister, the minister needs to have the financial statements from GEB to find out whether or not government got to put in money or whether it can get money from GEB because of dividends. Every year he has to prepare a budget, so every year those financial statements have to be there. I'm hearing now the last audited financial statements from 2019. Now, you can't be more res irresponsible in terms of operating that company. It's like putting on uh, uh, a towel around your eyes, walking around and still thinking of finding your way. If you don't know where you stand financially, mm. you are going to have serious accidents that we all are paying for today. So then, uh, Mr. Gibson, seeing the Prime Minister position now, um, do you think he's doing a good job? The Prime Minister have said certain things publicly that I think that um, I have to criticize him for it. This matter with GBE and the fuel clause that I raised, I know several weeks consecutively in the government press briefings, reporters have been asking him 
about the fuel clause and the article that I wrote about it. And his answer, I think, was a little um, um, a little disingenuous because he says, I got to look into it. Okay. It's now six weeks later. Have you not looked into it yet? How long does it take for you to look into something that I spelled out for you in detail? A day? Two days? with all of the experts you have around them, and you're still telling the people, still telling the press, oh, we're looking into it. First, he agrees, huh? He agrees it's extremely, extremely high, and people are suffering and in pain. Well, if people are suffering and in pain, partner, I think you've got to get into action immediately. Don't tell the people we're looking into it. After six weeks, you're still looking into it. No, I, I vehemently and seriously criticize the Prime Minister uh, for not tackling this the way he should. When you have people suffering the way they are, can't make ends meet, like I suggested, the first thing you should do is, since you agree it's extremely high, the first thing you should do is stop it. You can take all the time you want to look into it, but start by stopping it. Because as long as you don't stop it, you are contributing to the pain and suffering people are suffering from every day. And that's wrong. You know, in case you just joined us, uh, this is a special edition with uh, the number two candidate on the up party attorney, Mr. Richard Gibson Sr. And uh, we're here to speak with him. Mr. Gibson, you know, um, you're running in this parliamentary election scheduled for August 19th. This island has changed so often. You've been here for a very, very long time. Um, you might have asked you like a little bit about yourself. Uh, you came from Aruba, right? Because the last time on the program you spoke about your father and your mother. But I'd like to know a little bit more about you, Mr. Gibson. I was born in Aruba. I was born there. My father is from Trinidad. My mother is from St. Vincent. They met mm. in Aruba. They were attracted there as so many people from the Caribbean, as well as from St. Martin, Sabah, Stacia, Suriname, because of the oil refinery that was started in Aruba. We lived in the village of Aruba. <laughs> the village uh, was a little St. Martin, a little Windward Islands when you look at the village and its surroundings uh, because most of the people who went down there for the oil refinery as my father and mother did all end up living in the village which was like a ghetto it was like a bunch of wooden houses streets were muddy streets when it rains no running water <laughs> and i don't know if i told you this before but all we had was outhouses and the outhouses was a hole in the ground and a wooden structure over it. And from time to time, those things blew up because the accumulation of gas. A messy business when that happens. Mm. But we were poor as church mice, but we didn't know it. Because everybody else was poor, you know. Uh, so you didn't have anything to compare or someone is better off than you. We're all the same. Um, and it was a happy time, even though at night you don't have food in the house. If you're hungry, it was a common thing. You go and take a glass of water, fill up your belly, and you go to sleep. And nobody complained because that's the way it was with everybody in the village. But it was, an, it was a society or a community. Uh, and to show you how Caribbean it was, in Aruba, the streets where we live was called St. Martin Street, St. Estacia Street, wow. Saber Street. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, and, wow. and everybody I went to school with 
was also from this area, was also from Sebas. At that time, Sebas, Seisha, Curaçao, Bonaire, Aruba, all were one country in those days. Right. We went to school, and in, in, the, and in the school benches, you find a mixture of people from Suriname, from Venezuela, from uh, Guyana, uh, uh, and, and from everywhere in the Caribbean. I, uh, after I finished school, my father got a job for me at a law firm as an errand boy. But he insisted then too that I got to start studying law. It was his idea. I had to start studying law. So he set it up for me to clerk. And when you're ready and finish, you then file an application with the appellate court in Curacao to go and sit your examinations. It's a written and verbal examination. That's the first time I got on a plane flying from Aruba yeah. to Curacao, and I was then at that time 24 years old. I passed the bar examination. As soon as I passed the examination, I came to St. Martin. Really? Yeah. Well, why? Simply. Simple. When I came to St. Martin and I look around, it was if the whole village or a part of the village had moved to St. Martin because I found all my friends here, all my schoolmates, uh -huh. people who I sat in the school benches with. So the transition from Aruba to here was very simple and easy and, 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 and comfortable. Through the years, I, uh, I worked and I used to work day and night. I eventually expanded the law firm. And I started a law firm in Curacao and Aruba. I had law firms in St. Martin, Curacao, and Aruba. Biggest law firm in the whole country. But after a while you find what you were doing is managing lawyers and not practicing law. Uh, and I wanted to practice law and not manage lawyers. And lawyers are not the easiest people to manage, you know? Yeah. So I, I disbanded, I gave up the offices in Curacao and Aruba by giving it to my partners that I had down there in the law firm, Kouyers uh, and Aruba, to a lady who was a partner of mine too. And they took over those offices down there. Uh, and I continued here. Today, um, the law firm is being run by my son. My son, uh, mother was a uh, grandmother was from St. Eustatius. They too moved to Aruba during the uh, because of the attraction of the oil, oil refinery. And uh, I got married to her when I came to St. Martin. Uh, we divorced, and then I met a, a young lady whose father, whose grandfather whose father, I met a young lady whose father uh -huh. was the middleweight champion boxer of the Netherlands Antilles. His name was Sugar Boy Nando. Sugar Boy Nando was from St. Martin. In those days, Battling Siki was also up there with him in the same. Also from St. Martin. Also from St. Martin, yeah. Battling Siki, yeah. Uh, you MP Pandoflet, right. it's That's his, his father. father. Yeah. He's, his MP, um, he's MP Pandoflet's father. Right. That's yeah. right. That's right. Um, Sugar Boy Nanda was married to a lady who had a little shop in Middle Region, run it for years. Mm. Uh, do you listen to Sagan on Laser 101? Sagan, uh, no. no. Sagan uh. um, is the granddaughter of Sugar Boy Nanda. Really? Yes. <laughs> and Sagan is my daughter. That's her. Radio name is Sagan. Okay, I didn't know by that name. You put a P in front of her real name. Uh -huh. Her name is Pritchard Gibson. Right. But she uses the radio name Sagan every afternoon oh, okay. on her program, a very popular program. I have to check it out, see what it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, eventually my son took over the law firm here and um, I retired. Uh, from the law firm. I worked for like six years for the Enya Insurance Company. Uh, 
in Curacao. Um, I, re I re resigned in 2014 from Enya. 2015, I became Minister of Finance uh, of St. Martin, and everybody knew what I accomplished at that time. And here I am again, coming out of retirement after five years of playing guitar and playing golf and what have you, that's very boring. But the circumstances justified that something drastic be done because we cannot, like I said in the beginning, survive if we continue on the same path we are on. We have to do things differently. And I'm here trying to help and trying to bring whatever ideas and knowledge that I have through the years. You see, when you sit down in a group of people participating in discussions, it, it can only take one person to change the outcome of those discussions by that person bringing knowledge to the table that normally nobody would talk about because they didn't have the experience and the knowledge. That's how decision-making is influence and how you get the best decision. It's nothing different to what our ancestors used to do. We always went to the Council of Elders and discussed with them what you want to do, and the Council of Elders gave them the advice and direction so that they can come out with the best possible decision. You know, I, I don't know if I told you this the last time we spoke, but someone was saying to me that you bring a sense of credibility to the party that you're number two on the list now. Well, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so, and I hope, uh, and I guess the leader of the party uh, saw that, and that's the reason why he approached me to become part of the party, is to be able to fill in that gap in the party. But I circulated a flyer that I call the missing link. And I believe I am the missing link. Uh, I say that not arrogantly, but because of, I believe it is so. If you don't have people who have the experience, who have seen financial statements, who have worked at that level, who can analyze um, plans and discussions like I have in the past. If they had somebody like me at that time when the Dutch and Curacao approached them to sign this agreement to bail out Enya, they would have never signed that agreement. It's because uh, they're either stupid or they simply don't have the know-how because that agreement is so egregious for generations of St. Martin to send money to Curacao Company for 50 years, 30 years from money you borrow now, and another 20 years money from a central bank that you have shares in. 50 years. I mean, and you get nothing in return. If you invest in a company and the company does well, you should at least get some return. Nothing. We get zero. All we do is for those 50 years, and I, it, it poses the question, you know. CFT in first instance said no. St. Martin can't do that, can't afford it. It's too much of a stress on the infrastructure investments that St. Martin has to do in future. Not long after that, CFT changed and says, okay, yes, without explaining why. It tells you that it, it raises the question, is the CFT really there working in our best interest? Or is the CFT working in somebody else's best interest? To me, it looks like the CFT is working in the best interest of Holland and Curacao at our expense. And that should be watched carefully because the CFT fulfilled, fulfills a very important role 
in our budgetary system on St. Martin. I just throw it out there, yeah. think about it, because other than that, what's going on does not make sense from top to bottom, putting pressure on a government of St. Martin to sign agreement and sign it before election and sign it before even the parliament gave approval. It simply does not make sense. And it tells me that somebody is selling us out. You know, uh, Mr. Gibson, uh, you served as Minister of Finance. I've seen you perform. In fact, I've said to pe many people privately that I can't think of a better Minister of Finance seeing how you perform at the time. I knew because I was in shareholder meetings and saw your performance. So I, I have to ask you this. Um, after August 19, when you were elected, would you take the post of Minister of Finance or you won't? Yes, I would, if it's offered and if we earn it. But for that to happen, you have to give the up party the mandate. The mandate to be able to select the ministries and amongst others, the Ministry of Finance they have to get, then that's possible. If that does not happen, because UP does not get a mandate, then that possibility will not be there. But to answer your question, yes, if it's offered to me, I definitely, it will not be an easy task, given what I'm seeing and hearing and what have you, but certainly I would accept it and work towards it. When you look at St. Martin today, and you know, the former Nelson Tillis, we had a huge debt, and uh, since 10, 10, 10, we have seen the debt for St. Martin just skyrocket. It's over a billion guilders now. Are you concerned? Of course I'm concerned. More reason why we have to do something different than we're always accustomed to doing. We have to change our path. It's critical. It's critical that we get um, control of our finances, control of our waste, control of absence of corruption. Because combined all of these things is what's detrimental to us. Um, if you do not get control of your finances, um, you're going to continue holding out your hands, begging for loans, begging for other people to help you out, whilst we should be standing on our own feet. We have to live according to what we can afford. If you live outside of those standards, you are going to be creating a problem for yourself and others down the road. We have certain critical things that's facing us. SSV is a bomb waiting to explode. You see, what I see is that previous governments see a problem, see it festering, and instead of doing something about the problem, they just continue just looking at it festering until it explodes. SSV is going to explode. The same way as GB exploded. Is that what you want? If you don't change the path we're on, believe you me, our survival is going to be at risk as our survival has been at risk with this GEB problem. You know, Mr. Gibson, um, everything you said is true. Uh, I'm aware of it. A few other people are aware of it. But the majority of the people of this island have no real idea of the dangers that are looming down the road for St. Martin and their future. So, that's why they have to be told now, they, they could not believe me, although I'm saying it, I'm telling you that we are uh, at a cliff about to fall off the cliff. Uh, 
they don't they they, they can say no they're going to continue to do whatever they did before yeah? but at least you have given them the information that they require and the information is partner we at the point now that you have to change if we are to survive if you don't change we will not survive that's it so on August 19 don't do what you did before you got to do something different and I leave it up to you other than to suggest to you to vote number two on the up list, uh, Richard Gibson Sr. in this coming election, August 19th. You know, um, you've been out now for quite some time on the campaign trail. I asked the last time how you feel about it. But we're down to the wire now, August 19th. How are you seeing it? Any changes? Are the people suffering the way they're saying they are suffering? Oh, people are complaining. People are um, exhausted. Mm. People are, are angry. People are realizing that somehow the promises which have been made to them have not been kept. People can't make ends meet. And that's what gets people angry, you know. Uh, this GEB experience is a wake-up call, but it's only a wake-up call uh -huh. if that experience, use is made of that experience to do things differently going forward. Um, I've been a campaign trail. I, I really enjoyed it, you know, and meeting people and speaking to them and finding out what the problems are and what have you. Uh, 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 and people are appreciative that I'm coming back, that I've come out of retirement. But they realize, mm -hmm. most of them, that it's necessary and needed. Um, so I, and I, in, in a way, I'm really sorry that pretty soon the campaign is going to end because it has been a nice experience. Uh, but uh, uh, I think that the time is ripe. Uh, if people are not convinced now that they have to stop voting for friends and family and vote for people who are capable and competent in there, yeah. uh, then the experience they're having now, uh, if that doesn't convince them, nothing ever will. So is there anything else you want to say to the people of St. Martin? Well, the, you, you have the power. It, you have the power in your hand. That's what democracy is about, you know. You have the power in your hand to change the direction that St. Martin is going into. Use it. I want to direct a word also to those people who don't vote. Those people who are customary don't vote because they're frustrated angry and what have you that's a mistake now is the time to vote to ch because if you don't then you cannot influence what goes on in government you cannot influence the path that St. Martin will be following so please go out and vote on August 19th during the snap elections, vote for the up. Vote for the number two candidate on the up list, Richard Gibson. Okie dokie. Um, now, in other news, the new candidates is the ones that you have to also look out for. Um, we have an interview uh, with Ms. Bria Storten. She is um, of the United People's Party. Uh, we did an interview with her earlier. When we come back, we will be having an interview with her. All right, stay with us, 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 stay with us. Stay with us. Calling us in Martin. Yeah. This is your... My people of St. Martin, I'm Rolando Bryson, the number five candidate on the United People's Party. As many of you know, I've been the only voice over the last four years 
that has championed your rights to be included in one of the most vital things in any society, which is the banking system. Over those four years, I was able to keep the banks in check, make sure that they wouldn't introduce new fees, that it would start to treat you better, bring legislation to make sure that everybody has a right to a bank account. But what have we seen in the last six months since I've left Parliament? We've seen almost a week after the election, new fees are introduced. We see our seniors being treated worse and worse by our banks. And the situation is not going to get better unless the voice that has been there to enforce what government is supposed to do to treat you as a citizen with respect and demand that of the banks, without that voice, my people, we're only going to get worse and worse when it comes to banking in our country. In my time in parliament, and even if I was the lone voice, Oh, we voting for, we voting Lyndon Lewis, number three on no list, we voting Lyndon Lewis. Who we voting for, we voting Lyndon Lewis, number three on no list, we voting Lyndon Lewis. Equality, number three. Integrity, number three. Transparency, number three. Reuniting families, honorable, number three. Dependable, number three. Responsible. Number three, walking for all our we. My name is Dr. Anas Gracita R. Arundel, number six candidate on the URSM slate. My main objective as a Deputy Minister Plenipotentiary in The Hague are to secure housing options for students in the Netherlands, introduce voting rights for students and St. Martiners living in the Netherlands, and to continue to pursue funding opportunities for St. Martin in Europe. My slogan is competent, caring, and compassionate. Your number six candidate on the URSM slate, Gracita R. Arundel, elect us on August the 19th and make St. Martin beautiful again. St. Martin. It's time for you to go and vote. When you go into that voting booth, remember who has you in the dark. Remember who has you with those exorbitant GB bills and that fuel clause that we say has to go. Remember who has been failing you for all these decades. When you go out and vote, we urge you to vote. Vote for the Now Party. Vote for your candidate number four. Yours truly, Keith. Peter J. Gittins. Tell them for Peter J. We vote. When we touch road. Tell them for Peter J. We vote. When we touch road. Interview time right now on the Late Night Show. Of course, we are joined with another candidate. Candidate number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, yes, Miss Drea. <laughs> How are you doing, Andrew? How are you doing? Everything okay? Yes, everything okay, is everything well. Is fine. Now, of course, you are here to tell us a little bit about your um, first time running on a list. Why are you going to do that to yourself, Bria? <laughs> but tell the people first who you are. So let me go. Yes, I am Bria Sorton, candidate number 10, running in the snap election on August 19th. Now, why did I do that to myself, you know? When I'm out there campaigning, everybody is telling me it's about time. It's about time. It's about time you get out there because you're so passionate. And, you know, when you're campaigning for somebody else, you give it your all. Yeah. But they understand who you are, like your frustration. It's like, okay, I'm supporting Andrew this time. But then when Andrew is elected... Did he do enough for the people? Mm. Did he went in there and keep his word? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you watch them, you have faith, you have hope. And we know that certain policies and laws can't just be changed overnight. Correct. So I have a big platform and mm. those changes are going to be big. Now, I'm not saying that I have all answers and i'm saying as i get in there tomorrow it's gonna be done mm -hmm. but if i am elected i'm saying i'm going to search every avenue 
to assist the people because a lot of the people feel forgotten, they're tired, they're fed up, you know, and we also need to create the new MPs, we need to ensure that we bring stability back to St. Martin because it affects everything, even our tourism product, everything is affected by it. So it's not why I do it to myself, it's about not staying on Facebook, commenting about all of our problems, yes, yes. and then doing nothing. Yeah. I am raising no Facebook my gangster. son. Yes, yeah, yes, I'm yes. raising my son in St. Martin, you know, and my home is like a place where you can come and feel welcome. Our doors is always open to mm -hmm. help people, so a lot of those people remember us and know that, boy, I was going through this time in my life and I remember I could have come by, oh, you fall at $5, I could have come for some bread, I could have come and get a cup of tea. That's how our home always been and still is. So, that's 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 what you put yourself so in. Yeah, so it's but, not but, but, like why you did it. But uh, but like but especially when it comes to but young uh, candidates, and I always have say to myself, well, the young candidates have a tough time, a more tougher time, because they have to sell themselves to uh, a voters, uh, a voters um, a system, or you could say an electoral system that is full of persons who like to vote for the people that they know. They like to go for the older ones because even though the older ones are the ones that keep on disappointing them, but you're the one who's like, uh, you know, you still decide, okay, you're going to do it anyway. And you see what St. Martin does do to politicians, Priya. How you just have the courage to go through it. It's in my blood. Listen, I'm strong, you know, and my family, they are very strong. You know, my grandparents, my mom, you know, they believe in God, they trust in God. And we have had some trying times in life. And as a family, we got through it together. We didn't lose hope. We kept faith. And, you know, we don't have, I can't say life is everything what we wanted because sometimes it feel like, damn, I'm tired. Mm -hmm. Like, can one more bad thing happen for yeah. this week? And then and it, happens, and it happens. But then you get through it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, this, it's the same thing. And you know, we don't get more than we can bear. So, you know. Uh, listen, I just tell God sometimes, hey, take me off your battle list. Please. <laughs> <laughs> take me I love off that. the yeah. battle list. Yeah. But really, it's going into it, and a lot of people are stuck in their ways. But at some point in time, St. Martin needs to realize that sometimes we are our own problem. Now, if you want a change, you can't keep doing the same thing over and, and over. wanting a, a different, different result. result. Yeah, correct. You know, I even me as a young person, I had to realize where do you want to go? You know, what do you want to be? Where do you see yourself 10 years from now? So even with my platform, with social development, social welfare, sports development and stuff like that, it's not something that I can say be created right away. But this is something that if we time? start it, mm -hmm. it can develop and this will bring assets to St. Martin. This will develop St. Martin. It will help our community. It will help our youths. Um, mothers or fathers, single fathers, they can get help for their kids, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's just about building a stronger community. And having a broad back, of course. And, <laughs> yeah, and having a broad back, doing what we can, because there's so much things we can do, just how we live with each other. Like, you know, I know you for years. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. how we live with each other. Yeah. Like, we always have to look out for each other. It's not like... Saying, oh, yeah. but I can't have this person today. Do what you can. Be kind to others. And people are really frustrated in St. Martin. You see? The, yeah. the riot started, but people are frustrated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? We have to break down these barriers. Barriers in Parliament. We have to start doing it. We can't just say, stop that. This is how it is, and this is how we have to and accept that's how we're it. Listen, accept it, yeah. how can we change this? How can we upgrade this? How can we remove this? This ain't doing no good for the people. Change is needed, and it is needed now. I love that. Yeah. All right. Now, um, uh, let me go a little bit into your, um, your platform. Um, and let's say, for example, you have the... Um, you say social... Um, social welfare. Social welfare. Um, what does that entail? Well, my social welfare, it entails benefits for 
parents, single parents with low income. Mm -hmm. That's how we're going to start it. It can also improve. But I was asking a few legal representatives, hey, if I am elected, how do I get this done? So, of course, you know, it's a big platform. Yes, so they correct. Told me cool. They have to get the proper information to assist me, but it's already there that, hey, this is what I want to do, pension. The pension is being taxed, more senior care, even going to the bank and they don't have a senior line. I mean, those things is unacceptable. Senior care is mandatory. Okay. You have to, you know, the seniors, I love my grandparents. So that's why I can speak for seniors yeah. with passion. You live, you live it, you live yes, it. Yes, I live it and there's not enough care for them. So that have to be a priority. And it also goes with the community. It's like, you have to prioritize the people. You have to give the people respect and value. Nobody wants to feel like they're working so hard, fussing to make ends meet, and then they're still dealing with, you know, the, the little delays. Like, you know what senior going? She's going to go pick up her pension. The pension in there yet. Mm -hmm. Then they ain't going to line after she stand in the line so long to yeah. reach by the teller and ain't, ain't there on the time. No, we have to make these things priority. a priority. All right. Um, the 19th of August is just around the corner. Yeah. How do you convince someone who decides not to go and vote to pick number 10 on the United People's Party, Ms. Bria Swarton? Well, to the voters who don't want to you vote. You can talk to them, Bria. Yeah, the, to the voters that don't want to vote, I urge you, because whether you do politics or you don't do politics, politics is going to do you. You can't let... <laughs> I love that. You can't it, no, you can't sit this one out and let somebody else make the decision for you because your vote means the future you choose for yourself, for your kids, for your parents. It's important. So I know a lot of people are saying, yeah, but even when they get elected, they don't do nothing for me. Nothing is like the boys on the block. They say nothing being put in place for us. We're not getting no opportunity. So we done with that. Lead them do the thing. They they go in there and the next thing you know, they fall again. And mm -hmm. you know, I'm telling you, you can't have that mentality. You have the mentality to say that I want a better life and I want things to change. So it's important to choose a candidate wisely. Yes, and I do value your vote. Okay, everybody that know me know that. You know where to find me. They know that I am somebody, if I can do it, I will always help. If I don't know how I can help you, I will try and find somebody that can help you. So you can't just sit this one out and have the mentality that I'm voting and I don't care. Because when you don't vote, it's you saying yes to allowing these things to happen. Change have to happen for St. Martin now. It's due. <laughs> yeah. So I, that, I, that's my message for them. I love it. it out, yeah. I, I love it. I love it. I love it. And of course, I, I know for sure that um, Rhea did organize a, um, a vision um, um, party event, um, I think a couple of years ago already. No, it, it, was, uh, it, was, it was two years ago. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I don't know if if that was part of your vision on board to be part of Parliament. No. <laughs> no, actually, it wasn't. It wasn't. It, it's crazy. So you didn't put it for that? No, I did not. Because have I remember everybody. On that because board. everybody had different yeah, every, things yeah. on top of the board, and you know, it's uh, and it's 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 pretty pretty cool um, concept that you you came up. You should do it again, by the way. Yes, I'm going to do it again. And yeah. I'm gonna do it bigger. I'm gonna try and get some life coaches and just yeah. to make it inspiring because we all need a little bit of motivation you know I don't think there's enough that's why I'm saying it's important well me if I am elected to represent you know to be someone that kids can say hey I can respect her I can respect what she did and I would like to do greater and better things so you know I'm not trying to for me it's not about the power. It's about progress and seeing better for our citizens. Bria Stoughton, your number 10 candidate yes. on <laughs> the up. <laughs> Good luck, my dear. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you for having me. No Thank problem. you. I'm right. number 10. August 19th, vote. The United People Party, Bria Stoughton, number 10. Be safe, St. Martin. Love you guys. You get the kiss and all. <laughs> oh, your lord. We'll be back. Okie dokie, um, time flies when you're having fun.
That is it for Late Night Show. Thank you so much for watching. Until tomorrow, election time is almost here. Let it reach. Just let it reach. No, I just wanted to get it over with. Please.